Okay, uh, in today's video, as you can see from the title, we are going to be talking about radioactive decay law, radioactive decay. Before we do that, please don't forget in the bottom right hand corner, click on that red button, subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. I have a little bit of a cold, so hopefully I won't be coughing too much or sounding too nasal. And I've made some other videos about Radioactive, radioactive decay, which you can link to in the upper right hand corner of this video. So let's get started. This is radioactive decay law. And, you know, of course, really in physics, you know, the laws are kind of best, maybe best, uh, best explained by the equation. And this is the equation, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But really, what radioactive decay law says, or what really radioactive decay is, is that the number of parent nuclei in a radioactive sample decreases exponentially over time. And that's due to the half life. So if you have some amount of sample, after one half-life, you'll have half the number of radioactive nuclei. Another half-life, you'll have another half, so it goes down by half again. So you start off with a whole, then you go to a half, and then you go to a quarter, and then you go to an eighth and sixteenth, and that's exponential decay, and that is radioactive decay law. This is the equation, one of the equations we use to calculate different things for radioactive decay law. Let's just start with all of these things. Uh, let's just start with this one right here in the middle. That's a good place to start since that's N0, and N stands for the number, and N0 is the number of radioactive nuclei at time T equals zero. So sometimes we say we have a certain number at this point and how many we have later, then, okay, then we can figure that out, but N0 is the number that we have at time equals zero. And T is the number of radioactive nuclei that remain after some time T, so it could be after, you know, 100,000 years, after 20 seconds, after a million years, how many radioactive nuclei do we have left if we started with this number? Okay, so that's N0 and NT, and it's just for the number of things, in this case, radioactive nuclei. E is Euler's number, which you should have a button for that on your calculator. If you don't, you can just approximate it as 2.718. All right, and then E is raised to the power. So this is raised to the power of minus negative. Uh, this is lambda. And in this case, for lambda, lambda is the decay constant. We'll talk about what the decay constant is just a, in just a moment. And then T is the time, the time that occurs. And really what it is, is the time that occurs between these two number of radioactive nuclei. How many you had at the beginning and how many you had at some time T later. And we can use this equation to calculate for all of these things, including half-life, number at the beginning, number at the end, the time that occurs. Okay, so we can, uh, we're going to do a quick example at the end for one of those. And then I'll make some additional videos showing how we can use that to calculate some other things. So um, I wanted to point out that we have this equation, which is we often refer to as the radioactive decay law, but we have two other equations which are basically, you know, you might say the same or very similar, and that is because this equation we use for when we're talking about the number of nuclei. So if you have a problem and it talks about the number of nuclei, then you use this equation. But we can also do the same thing with the activity because the, the activity is directly related to the number, okay, activity is defined as the number of radioactive decays per second. Well, if you have less radioactive nuclei, then you can have less decay. So we can use the same equation that we have for, for activity. And of course, the number of nuclei or the number of atoms is directly related to the mass. So you can also use this equation for the mass. You'll notice all of these equations, all three of these equations are essentially the same. In one case, we use the number of radioactive nuclei. In this case, we use the activity, and in this case, we use the mass. But they're all the same, you know, um, exponential decay. And you can see that if you look at the graph of each one. Okay, so here I just made a graph showing what a typical decay curve would look like for the number. This is for the activity, and this is for the mass. And the, the, the graphs look exactly the same. They have the same shape. It's just you're using a different uh, counting system. In this case, once again, it's the number. In this case, it's the activity. And in this case, it's the mass. Okay? So this is expressed as a percentage. Start out with 100%. One half-life, you have 50. Another half-life, you have uh, 25. And then you have 12.5. And then 6.25, and so on. And the activity is the same. You have half. Then you have a quarter. And then you have an eighth and a sixteenth. 
the mass, you have half as much mass, and then second half-life, you have a quarter of the mass. So those three, that's kind of important to understand that those three graphs look exactly the same. Okay, now I think we're going to try a problem out here. Okay, let's say we have this problem, and we have a sample of material that contains one milligram of iodine-131. And this is a little background information, it's kind of interesting, this is an isotope that's used in very small doses, less than one milligram, um, to, uh, to, uh, to for thyroid cancer therapy. It's also a byproduct of nuclear fission, and it has a relatively high decay rate. It's considered to be, you know, highly active because it has a, a high decay rate because it has a low, short half-life. The half-life is only 8.02 days. And we want to know if we have one milligram of iodine-131, we want to know the number of atoms of iodine-131 that were initially present, and we need to know that so that we can calculate the number of iodine-131 atoms that are present after 50 days. Okay, we know the half-life, we know the initial mass. We're going to take that mass, okay, and we're going to convert it into the number of radioactive nuclei, and we can do that using a little bit of, you might think of chemistry or stoichiometry. We have one milligram, which is one times 10 to the minus third grams of iodine. We know that uh, you can look up online and look up in a book in, a, in the appendix somewhere that the uh, molar mass of iodine-131 is 130.91 grams. So we're going to convert from grams to moles, and that tells us that we have 7.64 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. We want to know how many atoms we have. So we know that 1 mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And we come out with 4.60 times 10 to the 21 atoms. That's what is present in 1 milligram of iodine-131. All I did was take this number, divide by this number, then I take the result, and I multiply it by 6.02 and I get 4.6 times 10 to the 21 atoms. Now, we are going to use this equation. This is a common kind of problem. We want to know how many we have left. Right? That's this. This is the initial number, 4.6, and we want to know how we're going to have after 50 days. So we're going to solve for nt. Of course, this equation is already solved for nt. And we know n0, which we calculated in the previous slide. We know e is a constant, so to speak. We have to figure out first what the decay um, value is here, and then the decay constant, and we know the time is 50. So we have to figure out this value first, and that is simply calculated as the natural log of 2. It's always the natural log of 2 divided by the half-life. Now, the half-life was given to us as 8.02 days. So we're just going to take the natural log of 2, which I believe is 0 0.693, divide that by 802, and we get that the half of the, the decay constant for um, iodine-131 is 8.64 times 10 to the minus 2. Now, sometimes you'll see people convert this into Becquerel or into seconds. They could convert this into seconds first because they want to know the activity because activity is expressed in decays per second. But we're going to leave this as days because our time up here is days. And you see that when we plug that into that equation, this equation right here, that the days are going to cancel and we'll be left with the number, okay? So all I did was I wrote the equation down up here. All I did was plug the values in. N0 is 4.6 times 10 to the 21st. E, I usually leave it as E. You could write down 0 0.693. And it's raised the power of minus, don't forget the minus, 8.64 times 10 to the minus 2 days. Now this is days to the minus 1. We were dividing by days in the previous slide. So this is 1 over days, and this is times 50 days, and then this day and this day will cancel, and we won't have any units except this is, has the units of number of nuclei. Okay, but the days will cancel. So that's why we left that as day. You can't, you can't convert this. You can't have this be seconds and this be days or this be days and this be years. It has to be the same unit, whatever unit you want to use. And then we just do that. I just showed you one step here. I took this value raised to this power, and that's 1.33 times 10 to the minus 2. And then you multiply those two together, and you get that the number of radioactive nuclei, or the number of atoms of iodine-131, which has a half-life of 8.02 days, if you start off with 1 milligram, 
After 50 days, you'll have 6.12 times 10 to the minus 19 atoms of iodine-131. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Please subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Uh, leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. I always want to know what people think of the videos or the channel or all the videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.